All right, this is Block 2, America Becomes a World Power, Section 5, the terms American Anti-Imperialist League and the Platt Amendment. The American Anti-Imperialist League is exactly what it sounds like. It is a league of Americans who are anti-imperialists. It started in the late 19th century. When? Why? When lots of Americans started to become pro-imperialist. How do you like that? It was a league containing anti-imperialist groups. It boasted many celebrities and well-known figures, Mark Twain being one of the most important. Um, however, it lost in the political arena because of strong differences on domestic issues. So, for example, one group in the Anti-Imperialist League might really favor a high tariff, but another Anti-Imperialist League group might favor a low tariff, so they never kind of got together and figured everything out to present one united front. Uh, so, because of that, they usually lost. Uh, they became known as America First-ers, as in, we put America first, so they became known as America Firsters, or and later they would be known as isolationists, saying, we want the United States to just isolate itself, and not to worry about what the hell's going on over here. We want the United States to be taking care of its own problems itself, and not worried about the rest of the world. The United States for the last 120 years has really oscillated between um, activist, interventionists, people who want the United States to deal a lot in the rest of the world, and isolationists who say, let the rest of the world stew in their own juice, let's focus on ourselves here at home. The Platt Amendment was an anti-imperialist success. And on the Army Appropriations Bill of 1901, when the Army was getting all of its money for 1901, a congressman by the name of Platt got an amendment passed to this bill. And it specified the conditions under which the United States could intervene in Cuba. If you remember, the Teller Amendment said that the United States did not want to annex Cuba. But after the war, Cuba sort of became a protectorate of the United States. The Platt Amendment was an attempt to make Cuba a little more independent. But the problem was it didn't work out that way. What the Platt Amendment did is it specified conditions where the United States could intervene in Cuban affairs. If this happens, then the United States can come in. If this happens, then the United States can come in. That could be interpreted lots of different ways. It also said Cuba could not make treaties with any other countries without American permission. Uh, especially treaties that might impair its independence. It could not make a financial treaty with England, for example, because if it didn't pay its debts, England might come in and um, try to take over the country. Uh, so the Platt Amendment first said the United States could only interfere in Cuban affairs under certain, uh, certain circumstances. It said Cuba could not make foreign treaties without American permission. Um, and these things were later put into the Cuban Constitution itself. In 1903, when Cuba became officially an independent country and wrote a constitution, these Platt Amendment things got put into the Constitution. And shortly after that, both in Cuba and in the United States, a lot of people started saying, hey, you know what? This Platt Amendment all it's doing is making Cuba a protectorate of the United States. Even though the idea was to keep Cuba independent, in reality, the Platt Amendment, the United States could intervene in Cuba in certain affairs. Cuba could not make the foreign treaties it wanted to make. All we're doing is we are making Cuba into a protectorate of the United States.